Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Wanted to dig into how to animate in Krita with Mesh Transform. Let's check this one out and start actually. <laughs> Quick bait and switch here. Not in Krita, but in Kden Live. The reason being is that to show you how we do this, we actually have to export all the frames. And you noticed, if you saw my previous uh, demo of this in a video where I just kind of almost brushed past it, uh, just to kind of give an example, this is how you do it. All right, so you can do this in really any video editor that supports image, individual image export or image sequences rather. Kden Live does it, so I'm gonna use that. So over here, what I'm gonna do is actually just drag this out a little bit here. I have my quick source clip here of just me really closing my mouth. <laughs> and I'm gonna take that and use it. And just because I have it dragged out here, I'm gonna bring the, uh, the zone out, but you don't necessarily have to do this. Uh, I'm just doing it because I'm doing it this way. I am going to export, I'm gonna use render. Um, I have my shortcut on, but you can also go to project and render, that's fine too. Uh, underneath here, what you'd wanna do is under the image sequences area, I use the ping, the PNG, which has worked really well for this part that I'm about to show you. Um, it used to be a lot more complicated, but it's gotten vastly easier. Um, all you have to do is select the, the type of image um, and again PNG works really good especially if you're gonna have transparency when you try to do this sort of thing um, you need to as you would with anything coming out of Kden Live or really any tool pick where it's gonna go in Kden Live it happens up here and I'm just gonna tick the selected zone just because it's just that one little bit I don't want all that space before it. Um, so in this case I'm gonna do that and render it and it doesn't take much it's a very short 15 frame clip here so now I can hop over into Krita, and this is where the real magic starts to happen. Now, if you're not familiar with the whole workspaces thing, uh, the button is in the upper right hand corner. I am in the animation workspace right now, and I have tweaked just a little bit to my liking where I show the brush presets and the color selector uh, because I use those things in the animation plane, but those do not appear uh, out of the box. So you need to flip them on, all right? So in here, what we do is actually under file, we need to import the animation frames. And the default options here are good, but just so you know about them, um, I want them in ascending because they're exported in numerical order from Kden Live. So I'm gonna add the images. I am gonna go to where I put those. And you can see how these have their numbers already appended. So I'm just gonna select them all and open. And it will stack them again in that order um, in ascending in this case, that's the way I want them. And I want it to start at zero and I want it to step one frame at a time. <laughs> uh, coming into it, that is how I want. It. And this will just drop them right on the timeline for me, which is really, really helpful. And from here, Really what needs to be done here is I just need to do the animation. Now, you might be asking, well, why is it in the only upper right hand corner? <laughs> well, I'll explain that. The project I made is in 4K and what I exported was HD. So it's smaller for this, but the principle still applies and you can get the idea of it from this. So um, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here just so we have that benefit and we can work from there. So on you can start on frame zero or give it a frame and then start the next one. These are all, this is like a frame by frame animation process is what it breaks down to. If you saw the other video, which I'd encourage you to do, um, you would know that the transform tool has a mode called mesh. Um, and you do have to make sure you flip this docker on, by the way, no one of those things. And then in mesh mode, you can uh, add in the grid by which to work with. So I'm gonna do a frame or two here and you'll get the idea. But essentially, we are just going to add changes. Now this does get a little trickier because you don't necessarily have the benefit. You, you can turn the uh, the onion skinning on, but it doesn't really work for you in this case um, because you don't have transparency that you're working with. Uh, if you had that situation, it would be better, but I don't, this is a solid frame. Uh, so it doesn't really give me any benefit. 
So I just need to kind of exercise working back and forth a bit, which is actually how traditional 2D animation was done anyway. Um, so uh, harken back to uh, an age, but we continue on, all right? And you do have to do the same thing where you build out the grid each time, and it might get a little tedious, I understand that, but you do get into a rhythm and you do come to a point where the changes just kind of become intuitive. So you can start to see now how I am just progressing the motion and I could move this any variety of ways. You could you could do some very complex motion with this tool because it's meant for bending and warping. Um, so there's some really creative things you could do with this um, other than distort one's head. But <laughs> this is how you actually create the animation. And then when you're done, what you would do is under file, go to the render animation. And from here, we can actually just export it straight as a video. This does depend on FFmpeg. Um, that comes baked in when you use the Linux version. I don't recall if it comes in with the Windows and I haven't seen um, Mac in that case. Um, so uh, check the forums, check the documentation uh, if you come to that, but you do need to have FFmpeg for this to work, all right? So I'm doing video. It's going to keep the same aspect ratio. It's gonna keep the same frames, uh, frame rate and all those things. Uh, I'm actually gonna set my last frame as 15 uh, because that's all the frames that I'm working with right now. And we'll keep that as it is for the moment. Um, also, I'm going to pick where I'm going to drop this because otherwise it will drop in the default space. So I will just... Give it a name, keep the extension, and then we're good to go. So this may take a bit depending on how many frames you have, um, the scale of them, the resolution, all those things. Uh, but if it's a fairly small scene, as you can see, this is a pretty quick operation. And now I have the ability to use that in wherever I was. So I'm gonna go back and import that. Um, now, what I'm showing you here, the benefit of it is that you can animate video in this case. That's kind of the benefit of using an image sequence like this. You could, of course, create your own drawings um, and then use the mesh transform to do the same thing. This is just an example of how you can use actual video and manipulate that using the mesh transform tool in Krita. So I'm gonna bring this over now. And going to, this is different again, because what I should have done when I exported it is this is a 30 frames per second and it was 24 frames per second if you saw so I, my time signatures are not the same pay attention to that when you do that if you want them to be in sync but essentially you can see how that is now a piece of the project and if you had sound and if you can't pay attention uh fortunately i didn't to the, the the frames per second even your sound will lined up it will be there will be no difference in quality if you pay attention to all those different uh, things keeping the project specs the same from here into krita and then coming back again they're all important to pay attention to as you can see why um because so it maintains the scaling and it, you don't incur any loss or change really other than the desired ones of doing the animation all right so that's really the whole idea here behind how you can animate with Mesh Transform. You could do some really creative things and actually somewhat shortcut um, the animation that you have to do. Even with your drawings a little bit, you could rough the drawings and then use this transform tool to get you the rest of the way to do the sophisticated bends and warping without having so much to get the angles perfect when you draw them. So it's a nice tweaking tool and it also works really well in this context when you're manipulating existing video using that image sequence approach as well. So I invite you to go try it. The tools I'm using again were Kaden Live a free open source video editing tool and also Krita that is also a free open source tool, both from the KDE group, both powerful, fantastic tools. I'll put links in the descriptions below. Go check them out. Please do give me a thumbs up if this was useful to you. Also subscribe if you haven't done that already and leave a comment, ask a question. I will see you at the next video. Until then, take care.